for today's lesson, we'll be starting off with the harder part of financial mathematics, uh, which is investing money by regular installments. Um, now, what I can say about this topic is there's, there's so many different questions out there from the HSC, the trial papers, um, the textbooks, uh, that there's, there is a diverse number of questions for you to use different strategies to approach. And this part of the course will be a bit wordy. So I think if I was to give you the best advice for this type of topic, it would be to slow down and read the question and please make sure you do something right at the very beginning because once you commit a mistake throughout this question, it would take some time to restart. And that's a problem that I think uh, many students want to count in HSC, um, which is reading the working out and making adjustments and so forth because it's not like other questions, okay? Now, uh, what generally happens in this, um, this part of the topic, okay, is that you'll be finding the sum of a number of accumulated amounts. Um, accumulated just means uh, a, a lot of amounts over time, okay? So there will be a fixed amount invested each period, which means amount that you put in the bank for like every single year, okay, say for example. I mean, if you look, look at example one, just at the question, um, a woman invests $1,000 at the start of each year, okay? So every year at the beginning, she's gonna put $1,000 in, and you know, once you put $1,000 into the bank, okay, after every single year, it's going to receive some sort of interest. So when time goes by, the one year has gone uh, after you put $1,000 in, you get 9%, okay? So let's just say, for example, you put $1,000 in, it gains 9%, okay? Then in the next year, you put another $1,000 in, and that will gain 9%, but the original amount that you put in, which had 9% already, is gonna gain another 9%, basically, okay? And so forth, and you just gotta find out half uh, how much it is after 25 years. Now, um, that's just an example of a situation, all right? You can have a read of example one later if you want, if you want uh, but I'm going to start off with the question uh, over here instead, okay? Just so you can see line by line what the processes are. So, with this particular question, uh, I've got Lucy here who invested $3,000 at the beginning of each year for 20 years, okay? Find the total of her investment at the end of 20 years if interest is compounded annually at 7.5% per annum. All right, so what we've got to write is this. We always have to start off our answer by writing A for the amount. So this is this is amount is um, the total amount after, you know, how many years it is. So we're going to write A1 to denote what happens after one year. So at the very beginning of the first year, she puts in $3,000, okay? Now, we're going to multiply this by um, some particular number, and this number here is actually by using this formula here, okay, where this is number one, okay, the principal is actually just um, 3,000. Now, what's the ratio in this case, okay? The ratio here is, or the rate is 7.5% per annum, but that as a decimal, if you were to divide that by 100, it would be 0.075. Okay, we're going to add that with um, number one here. So that will be 1.075. Okay, so we're lifting this number up by 7.5% uh, of itself. And that will be some particular amount. We don't really care about it for now. But what we're going to achieve here is what is the value or total value of an investment after 20 years? So... Um, we're going to do A2 now. So now this is sitting in the bank right now, okay? I'm going to copy this number here, down here all the time. We're going to copy that previous number. Now two things happen in this case. I'm going to write them in purple. Two things. This is now in the bank. Now this is also um, the start of the second year. In the start of the second year, this person put in $3,000 once again into the bank, okay? Then, whatever this total amount is, everything here is going to gain this much interest. So we're gonna bracket all this stuff, raise the whole number up by 7.5%. Here we go, okay? Oops, sorry, it should be 1.075. Um, then what we do is we have to multiply this um, 
through by just lifting each power of 1.075 up by 1. So if you multiply by this one here, okay, these two numbers, we're going to lift that up so that it becomes 3000 times 1.075 squared. And then if we multiply 3000 by 1.075, we get basically what I said. Um, now, what's going to happen here now is we should write A1, A2, and A3 before we generate a pattern. Let's see what actually happens. Okay, so A3, again, is all of this copied down. And what we're going to do, again, is this is the start of the third year. She puts $3,000 in. Okay, so that's the process. And then time goes by from the um, beginning of the third year to the end of the third year. So once that one year passes, annually, she gains 7.5%. So it times by 1.075 once again. So once we do this, multiply every single group of terms here by 1.075 so that the powers gain one on the index, like so. So this becomes squared, and this becomes 3,000 times 1.075, okay? So, um, we need to recognize a pattern here, and we do that by factorizing some number of routes. And I would encourage you to factorize, in this case, 3,000 out, okay? Now, if I factorize 3,000 out, I'll have one, um, whoops, sorry, factorize 3,000 out, uh, from the end actually, so start from the end, if you factorize that 3,000 out, you will get 1.075, factorize 3,000 out of this, you get 1.075 squared, plus factorize 3,000 out of this, you get 1.075 cubed. And the reason why we factorize from the end going this way is so that our powers of 1.075, they go up by one, okay? You want it to go up rather than um, writing the other way, okay? So, once we've got that, this is now a pattern where we say, oh, there's a 3,000 outside, it's always gonna be 3,000, and this will change depending on what A value this is. So, we're gonna write dot, dot, dot vertically like this. And this is to indicate what happens now after 20 years. So we're going to write A20, okay? So A20 is now going to be 3,000, bracket, well, um, I can see that there's a 3 here and that there was a 3 here. So if there's 20 here, that means this is going to keep going until this number here is number 20 by the same pattern. So we're going to write 1.075 plus 1.075 squared. Um, plus 1.075 cubed, plus dot, dot, dot. It's going to keep going until there's going to be a whole bunch of terms in here, like power 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up to the last term, which is power 20. And what you now recognize is that this part of the, um, the accumulated sum is a geometric progression. Okay, each time you go from one number to another, okay, I'm going to write this down, uh, this is going to be a ratio of 1.075, whereas this is your first value, okay? So we're now going to apply our JP formula to this part of the series, okay? So I'm just going to write that JP formula right here so you remember. S of n is A bracket R to power n minus 1 over R minus 1, okay? So that's a sum of a JP. Now, let's write down 3,000 times... A value, so our A value in this case is 1.075. R is going to be 1.075 as well. Now N here represents the number of terms. So you can see that the number of terms here will be the power 20, but you have to make sure that that first term is 1.075 to the power of one. So from the number one here as a power to number 20, how many numbers are there from 1 to 20? That will be 20, okay? Some cases it's um, different, okay? So this case you have to make sure it's a 1 
Okay, if it's a one, then you can just read this number. So it's power 20, so it's 20 numbers, minus a whole one over R, which is 1.075. Let me just rewrite that. 1.075 minus one. Okay, and let me just stick that here. That would be equal to this answer here, which I'm just gonna copy down. Um, it's approximate answer, really, I think. It's approximately uh, 139658. Okay, well, actually, if I was to type that in, let me just, just double check that. So maybe I can generate a better answer. You know what? Okay, let me write the better answer for you. This is actually going to be equal to 139657.597 dot dot dot. Let's round this to two decimal places because I think it's better to, since we're dealing with money and we ended in cents. So this number here is going to turn into 60 since this number is above 5. So it's 0 0.60. There we go. So our whole amount, okay, all the amounts that we put in um, are going to increase to this amount, okay, along with the interest. All right, I'm going to move on to question two. So question two, uh, Scott places $150 into the account, all right, $150 into the account, beginning of every month, okay, see that? This is already different to the previous one. The other one was per year, whereas this one's per month. Now, compound interest of 1% per month is paid on the account. Find the value of Scott's investment at the end of three years. So I've got some um, durations here, which aren't really the same. You have to make sure all of these are the same. So this is per month, excellent. This one here is per month, excellent. But this one is not per month. Okay, I'm just gonna rewrite this as three times 12, which is 36 months. Okay, I'm just gonna write that first, all right? Then what I'm gonna do is see how in the previous question we've had like, you know, A1, A2, A3, up to A20. Well, what do we have to achieve here? You gotta actually remember that. Our last goal here is going to be A36, all right? We start with A1 first, okay? A1 being $150. So at the beginning of the first month, this person puts $150 in, and then from the first year, um, beginning of the first year to the end of the first year, what happens is time goes by, and when time goes by and the money is sitting in the bank, it's going to um, gain some interest. Okay, sorry, did I say year? It should be months. Um, so at the beginning of the month to the end of the month, it should gain 1% of interest, so that will be 1.01, uh, .01, where that 0 .01 is the extra 1%. So, A2 now, the next part of it, uh, will be that same value previously, which is A1. We're gonna copy down A1's answer, and then we're going to do two things to it. We're gonna add another 150 at the beginning of the second month, that's what they said. Then we're going to raise this up by uh, 1%, which is 1.01 at the end, and then start multiplying those 1.01s in, and that gives you 150 times 1.01 .01 squared plus 150 times 1.01. .01. All right, now A3, okay, will be the exact same as A2 to start off with, but we're going to do the same thing again as before. At the beginning of the third month, we're going to plus 150, we're put $150 in our account, then times this by 1.01 .01 to increase the amount by 1%. We're going to now multiply that 1.01 .01 outside, inside the bracket, and this will give us 150 times 1.01 .01, um, cubed plus 150 times 1.01 .01 squared plus 150 times 1.01. .01. Okay, so once we've got that happening, um, we can now, factorize an amount out, okay? So the amount that I recommend factorizing will be 150 from the end. So factorize 150 from the end will give us 1.01 .01 left, 
plus 1.01 squared, then 1.01 cubed. Okay, so this will ensure now the powers are going up by one. Excellent. So remember what we're trying to achieve, guys. We're trying to achieve what happens to our accumulator value after 36 months. So let's do A36 and figure out a pattern. Well, this 150 at the beginning is going to stay put where it is. We're just going to copy that down. But the pattern, um, which is that geometric progression inside the bracket, is going to change a little bit. It's going to uh, keep going until the last term is going to be 1.01 .01 to power 36. Okay? And so, once we do that, well, um, we're going to use our JP formula now, where this is A, and RR is going to be 1.01. .01. Let me just write down our formula again to remind you. So it's A bracket R to power of N minus 1 over R minus 1. So, A is 1.01 .01 times R, which is our 1.01 .01 here again. And to the power of N, N in this case is number 36. There are 36 terms altogether in this series. Minus 1 over 1.01 .01 minus 1. Okay. Let me just type that in so that I can see what exactly this is. I've typed it wrong. Okay, got it. So, A36, what equal to 6,526.147, but approximately to two decimal places, this will be 6526.15. Okay, there we go for that question. Okay, that's question two. Now, let's go on to question three. Question three says, Emily placed $1,500 into an account for her son on the day of his birth and added an additional $1,500 every single year on his birthday. 6% per annum compound interest was paid annually on the account. Okay. I'm just going to highlight that. And what was the value of the account on her son's 18th birthday? Okay. The final amount and the interest having just been paid. Okay. So, you just got to make sure you have to understand that it ends on her son's 18th birthday. So, does it end with interest paid or does it end with an amount given on, her, on his birthday? It's actually this. So in the previous question, you can see that um, there's two things that's happening in purple. There will be an amount put into the bank and then interest is gained. Now this was last, right? Now for this particular question, the interest is not the last thing that happens after every single A value on the line. So it's actually this that ends with it. So we'll see what happens now. Now, uh, on the day of his birth, well, the son will be zero years old. So we do A zero, and we start off by saying that the son will get $1,500. A one, okay? A one, remember, is on the first birthday, right? This is on the first birthday now. Okay, so what happens from zero years old to the first birthday? Between the time when the son was zero years old to the first birthday, time went by. So that amount grew by 6% in the bank. So that means we will have 1,500 multiplied by 1.06. But as soon as it hits the time of the, a kid's first birthday, this person will get $1,500 extra. Okay, so you know what? Let me just write this in purple. Times 1.06. And then this whole amount here is added with 
1,500. So those are two things. So see this is switched compared to what we did in our last question. All right, let's do the same thing again for the next part. All right, we're gonna copy a one down. Okay, two things happen again. So from the first birthday to the second birthday, time went by first, which means the money in the bank grew by 6%. So we're gonna bracket all that times by 1.06. And at the second birthday on that day, he gets 1,500. And then what we'll do to that is we shall now um, expand. Okay, I should have wrote this in blue by the way, so that it doesn't confuse you. There we go. All right, so we're now gonna have 1,500 times 1.06 squared plus 1,500 times 1.06, okay, plus 1,500. There we go. All right, so now for a, um, you can do A3 if you really wanted to, but I think once you have three terms like this, that's enough to see a pattern, okay? I mean, last time in A3, you can see there was three groups of things and then I stopped, okay? So it's not always A3, it's recommended to be A3, but once you see um, three groups of terms here in A2, we can now factorize 1,500 out, we're going to put a bracket there, and that will be 1 plus 1.06 plus 1.06 squared, okay? And so we can now keep following this pattern so that we get A18 because it says what happens on the 18th birthday on that day, so we'll do A18, 1,500, bracket, 1 plus 0.6 plus 1.06 squared, plus dot, 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 all the way to what number this is, okay? Now, I just gotta make sure that this number here and the previous one follows this number here. So if they're the same thing, then that means this is going to be the same thing. So following that pattern, we'll get 1.06 to the power of 18, okay? Now, just be very careful here with this. There's not exactly 18 terms inside this series. The way you actually justify that is by doing this. Let me just show you. The term here, which is number one, is actually 1.06 to the power of zero. Now you gotta see how many numbers are there from zero to 18. And the way you count how many numbers are there from a number to another number is by getting that last number, which is 18. We minus that original number at the beginning, initial one, zero, but we have to make sure we plus one. Okay, and that will give you 19. Uh, and let me just show you that with the previous question, actually, as well. So can you see that in the previous question, we had a power of 1 right here, power of 36. If I did 36 minus 1 plus 1, well, that means there's 36 terms, which is that power there. But for this one, it's not. There's 19 terms, but it's not this power, okay? So don't get tricked by that power there. There's actually 19 terms. Now again, our formula is given by a bracket r to the power of n minus 1 over r minus 1. Now that will give us um, also times 1 for our first value. r is 1.06, and now we're raising this to the power of 19, as we said before, subtracted by 1 over 1.06 subtracted by 1. Okay, now let me just type that in our calculators. And we get 50,639.987, okay? And so this rounds to become uh, 50,639 and 99 cents if we round it to two decimal places, okay?